All right. So today we're going to talk about uh, how to imply a domain or how to restrict a domain. Um, first off, let's warm up with this problem. On your homework check, you're going to need to know how to evaluate a piecewise function. You're going to need to know how to identify a function. Um, you're going to need to know how to find the domain and range from a graph. All right. So all those things you need to know how to do. So let's evaluate this piecewise function. Remember, when you're evaluating a piecewise function, you're looking at the x value and you're trying to find out which function is it defined, which uh, function is it defined for. So the square root of x plus 3 and you have 2 over x. This one's only defined when x is less than or equal to negative 3. The bottom is defined when x is greater than negative 3. So f of negative 4, where am I defined at, the first or the second function? First. When I plug in negative 4 to the first function, what do I get? I get the square root of what number? What's the square root of negative 1? For our purposes right now, since we're only in the real number system, it's undefined. Do you understand that? So here, this first part is going to be undefined. A lot of you probably had a problem trying to do that problem, right? You should have had a problem doing that problem. F of negative 3. When you plug in negative 3, what do you get? Which one do you plug negative 3 into, the first or the second? First. When you plug in negative 3, what's negative 3 plus 3? What's the square root of zero? What's the square root of zero? Uh, zero? zero. Zero, good. F of zero, where does that fall at? What function, first or second? Second. second. When you plug in zero, you get two divided by zero. What's two divided by zero? Try it again. Is it undefined or is it zero? It's undefined. You can't divide by zero. Division by zero is impossible. So this is just another undefined function. So what we're interested in today is this. We got two undefined values. When do we get an undefined value? Well, the first one came when we did what? Try to take the square root. Try to take the square root of what? A negative or a negative number in general, right? The second one came when you got a zero for a denominator because you can't divide by zero. We're going to talk about this process called restricting, um, restricting or implying the domain. So the book calls it implying the domain. When I say domain, you think of what values? X, X values. Uh, when I imply the domain, what you're doing is you're going to tell me the X values that the function can be or that you can evaluate the function with. And we go through that the back way by saying what values X cannot be. All right. We're going to take out all the values that X cannot be. When you see the word implying, this also means This also means to restrict. So if you see the word restrict or implying, they mean the same thing. Restrict means tell me what can X not be. That's what I want to know. What can X not be? And the good news about this is that it only matters in two cases. There's only two cases we have to worry about. We've seen those two cases already. When do they occur? When you have a square root, a negative under the square root, or you have a zero in the denominator of a fraction, right? So when we look at this, here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to look at the fraction case first. So when I have f of x is equal to some fraction, we'll call the fraction some numerator function divided by a denominator function. This is called a rational expression. Why is it called a rational expression? What does the word rational mean again? Rational looks a lot like what word? Say it again. A ratio, and a ratio is a what? Fraction. So it looks a lot like a ratio which is a fraction. And here, this is a good fraction. The fraction is we can uh, do any kind of math we want to as long as the bottom of the fraction does not equal what number? Zero. So I'm going to say that. The semicolon means provided that. Appreciate it, man. 
Hey, he's not here. He's not? He's not even in my class anymore, I don't think. So, f of x equals this fraction, and this fraction is good as long as the denominator does not equal zero. That's what we're going to say. We're going to take out every value that makes the denominator zero. For instance, up here, what made the denominator zero? What number? Zero made it zero, right? Any other number you plug in would have worked. You could have plugged in one, negative one, negative two, negative three, it would have worked. The only value that didn't work is zero. So here's how this works. Uh, here's an example. Let's look at f of x is equal to 2x plus 1 over 3x plus 5. The first thing you need to realize is this. Either you're looking at fractions or square roots. If you look at your green paper, look at the green paper I gave you the other day, what do you see on there? What kind of problems do you see? Fractions and square roots. You understand that? So this only applies to fractions and square roots. We have a fraction. Since we have a fraction, what can the bottom not be? Zero. I want to know what value is going to make the bottom zero. How do I do that? How do I figure out what value makes the bottom zero? Bless you. How do I find out what makes the value zero, the bottom zero? We could guess, right? Say it again. Yes, yeah, not necessarily five, but yes, yeah, that's what you're really doing. You're really going to, all you're going to do is say, well, here it says the denominator can't equal what? What is my denominator right now? So I'm going to say this. I'm going to set the denominator equal to zero and solve it. Because if I do that, what is that going to give me? It's going to give me the value that makes the denominator equal to what number? How do I solve this then? Minus 5 on both sides and then divide by. So I get x is equal to what? What kind of? I tried it again. Negative 5 thirds. Now, here's the problem though. When x equals negative 5 thirds, what happens? This becomes what number right here? 0. Let's actually test that. What's 3 times negative 5 thirds? What do the threes do to each other? So you have negative five plus five, which is what? Zero. So when this bottom is ne when the x is negative five thirds, the bottom becomes what number? So what do we actually want to do to this number? We want to throw it out. We don't want that number. X can be any number but this number, negative five thirds. Does everybody understand that? If it's any number but negative five thirds, the fraction is okay. So this is the inequality. How do I say it in terms of an interval? How do I state this in an interval? What do I write? How do I say every number but negative 5 thirds? In terms of an interval. What's the smallest number this can be then? In theory. What's the smallest number I can have here? What's the smallest number I can have? Yes, negative infinity. That's the smallest number I can have. Whatever that number is, negative infinity. Up to what number? Up to negative 5 thirds, right? Then I have to do what with negative 5 thirds? Take it out. How do I show I'm not including that? The bracket out of parentheses. Which one? Parentheses. And because I'm not including it, what happens there? I have a hole at negative 5 thirds. Everybody understand that? How do you cover that hole? Union. So I'm going from negative infinity to negative 5 thirds. Union. From negative 5 thirds to infinity. This says every number except what number? Negative 5 thirds. <coughs> So you give it a try. Try this problem. Uh, f of x is equal to 4 over x squared minus 3x minus 
Hey, what can the bottom not equal? So wait, the bottom cannot equal what number? It can't equal zero. Zero. Does everybody understand that? When I look at this, how many values are going to how many values are going to make the bottom zero this time? Two. Two. There are two values. How do I know there's two values? Because I have a what? X squared. X squared means I should do what to find those two values? Factor it. When you see a squared term, you're going to automatically think to factor things, all right? So when we factor this, I'm looking for factors of 28 that add to negative 3. What are they? Thank you. So when we factor this, we get x minus 7 and x plus 4. Make sure you know how to factor. Um, when I factor, here's how I factor this. I do uh, factors of negative 28 up here that add to negative 3. They are negative 7 and positive 4. Negative 7 times 4 is a negative 28. Negative 7 plus 4 is a negative 3. So here I can see now that I need to set these two numbers equal to 0 when I solve it. So that's x minus 7 times x plus 4. These cannot equal zero because when they equal zero, they make the val they make the bottom zero. So that means x is not equal what two values? Seven, seven and negative four. So how do I write this domain? How do I say every number except negative four and seven? Well, what's the small? What can be, what can the smallest number be in the set? What can the smallest number be? Negative infinity. So infinity. Yes. So that's negative infinity up to what number? Negative four. Do I include or exclude negative four? Exclude it, because I don't want it. So then I need a union, right? And I go from negative four to what? Seven. Seven. Include or exclude seven. And I need another what? And I go from seven to as your domain. So that's the first case. The first case when we have a fraction. And when we have a fraction, we know the bottom cannot be what? Zero. The bottom cannot be zero. So you have to take out all numbers that make the bottom zero. The second case is when you have a what? What was our second case we worked with earlier? Square root. Underneath the square root, the number has to be what? Positive or it can be what? We also thought it could be when we plug the negative three, we got a zero. So it can also be zero, right? Numbers can be one of three things. They can be positive, neutral, or negative. Y'all got that? Here, underneath the square root, the numbers cannot be what? They cannot be, they can be positive. They cannot be negative. So when we have a square root, looking at square root function, f of x is equal to the square root of x. When I have this, this function is defined as long as the numbers are zero or positive. How do I say that in terms of math symbols? How do I say zero or positive in terms of a math symbol? Where are all the positive numbers at? How do you know a number is positive? Say that again. It has to be greater than zero. Does everybody understand that? A number is positive is greater than zero. So, but for this case, can it equal zero? How do we say greater than or equal to zero? Well, with the symbol, we say x is greater than or equal to zero. So this function is defined as long as x is greater than or equal to zero. Here's an example. Take the function f of x is equal to the square root of 2 minus x. Two minus x is defined as long as what? As long as it's greater than zero. Does everybody understand that? So we're just going to say that two minus x has to be greater than or equal to zero. How do I solve this equation? Subtract two on both sides. So I get negative x is greater than or equal to negative two. Then I got to divide both sides by what? 
negative 1 to uh, negative 1. When you divide by negative 1, what happens to that sign? So it becomes x is less than or equal to 2. Let's verify that this is actually true. Pick a number that is, let's pick 2 first. If I plug in 2 because it says less than or equal to 2, right? Plug in 2. What's 2 minus 2? Yeah. Can I take the square root of 0? Yeah. Yes. Um, plug in a number less than 2. 1. What's 2 minus 1? one? Can I take the square root of 1? Yes. What about pick a number bigger than 2? Take 3. What's 2 minus 3? Can I take the square root of negative, of, uh, negative 1? No. So when I pick a number that's bigger than 2, what happens? I get undefined values. I got that? When I pick a number that's less than or equal to 2, I get values that are defined in this domain. So how do I write this domain here in terms of the interval then? How do I say less than or equal to 2 in terms of an interval? What's the smallest number in that set? Up to the value of 2, right? Do I include or exclude 2? Include or exclude? Include it. Measure domain. Try this one. f of x is equal to 2 over the square root of x minus 5. Before you start, ask yourself this question. Do I have a fraction? Yes. Do I have a square root? Yes. I mean, I'm going to have to imply the domains with those restrictions, all right? What is the fraction restriction? The bottom cannot be what number? What is the square root restriction? Underneath it, it has to be greater than or equal to zero, right? Well, look where your square root is located at this time, though. It's located where? So how does that change that restriction? How does it change the square root restriction? Normally we just say that x minus 5 is what? Greater than or equal to 0, right? But because it's on the bottom, it cannot equal what number this time? So we just say that x minus 5 is just greater than 0 for it to work. Which means x has to be greater than what number? 5. Why can it not equal 5 this time? Good, because if it's 5 minus 5, that takes us at the square root of 0, which is 0, and you're doing 2 divided by 0, which is undefined. So anything bigger than 5 will work, though. <coughs> How do you write this domain? What's the smallest number in this set? Try it again. What's the smallest number in this set? 5. Do I include or exclude the 5? Include or exclude? Exclude it this time. So it's 5, 2, infinity. When do I need to imply or restrict the domain? What two cases? Fraction. Fraction or a square root. Does everybody understand that? That's the only thing you need to worry about. So here's another example. What's the domain of this function? f of x is equal to 4x squared minus 3x plus 1. What's the domain of that function? Which way? Yeah. That way. What's the domain of this function? Ask yourself again, do I have a fraction? Is this a fraction? Is it a fraction? No. Do I have a square root? Is this a square root? No. Do I have a fraction or a square root here? No. As a matter of fact, if I were to graph 4x squared minus 3x plus 1, what would it look like? What shape is this? A u is a parabola, right? So it looks something like this. Everybody understand that? Well, when I look at this graph, the axes to the, the axes to the left are all covered, right? And the axes to the right are all covered, right? So what's the domain of this function? The domain is all real numbers are from 
negative infinity to infinity. Why is it from negative infinity to infinity? Do I have a fraction? Do I have a square root? So it's going to be what then? All real numbers. The only time you have to worry about implying the domains with fractions and square roots. You understand that? All right. Um, so you have the rest of the period to actually try to finish the homework. It's only 10 problems. It shouldn't be that.